When you think about Five Nights at Freddy's, what do you think about? The animatronics? The lore? The fan songs? Theories? Let's plays? With a franchise as big and beloved as FNAF, there's a lot to love. But out of everything that's talked about in the FNAF community, something you may not remember hearing much about is the player themselves. The night guards in all the different games are pretty uninteresting, as the player is supposed to be in their shoes, and that doesn't leave much room for character development. Plus, after several years since the franchise's conception, we now know most likely that they were all Michael Lafton using different names. But let's go back to 2015, when there were only two or three games released. We didn't even know who William Afton was, let alone his son Michael. Back then, these night guards surprisingly had a much bigger presence. People had their own ideas about who Mike Schmidt and Jeremy Fitzgerald were, and with all the theories floating around, of course, Tumblr had to make something weird out of it. Something gay out of it. Many FNAF fans, even veteran players of the game, don't remember or simply never encounter the night guards mini fandom. It's weird to me, since this was my entire life when I was 12, these characters had little to nothing to do with FNAF in general, other than the fact that they worked at Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. I could make an entire video about how Mike Schmidt was a pun lord who, according to some people, loved this girl named Doll, and according to other people was gay for Jeremy Fitzgerald, who was a skittish twink night guard without a face who loved anime and limons. I cannot make this shit up. But the focus of this video is something different. Someone 12-year-old me was obsessed with. Someone... purple. This is the story of Purple Guy, but not William Afton. Vincent Purple Guy was much, much different. Also, just a disclaimer before I get too far into this, I'm going to be using a lot of art either from Rebornica or in their style since they are kind of the parent of the Night Guards fandom and character designs, but I will not be going into the drama surrounding them. It's really hard to find any solid information on anything that happened in this fandom seven years ago, and I'd rather not scroll through all the preteen drama. I'm making this video so all of us weird little gay kids can look back and laugh now that we're all grown up. Also, if you like this kind of video, I want to upload much more weird internet rabbit hole type videos in the future, so please consider subscribing. Also, also, I stream every day on Twitch. Anyways, on with the video. It all started in 2014 with the release of FNAF 2. The first game had gained quite a lot of attention from big gaming YouTubers, and consequently, FNAF 2 had a large audience of children and teenagers. Overall, everyone was really enjoying the game. It was more complex than FNAF 1. It was different while still retaining the same characters and core gameplay, and it built upon the cryptic lore that was hidden throughout the first game. The most important parts of the lore we got in FNAF 2 were hidden in the Death minigames. After all the speculation about who the true villain was in the first game, we finally had a face to the crime. And while many people rushed to make theories about the mysterious child murderer, the younger audience had different ideas. The series to this point had already been memed on a lot, so it should come at no surprise that people took the sprite of Purple Guy and started going crazy with different designs and personality traits. The first major personality trait I remember the fandom giving to Purple Guy was that he loved Toast. Not that he was a cold, heartless killer, but that he bound to look like Toast, so he loved Toast XD. And that was the beginning of the clownification of Purple Guy. I think it was also around this time that Purple Guy kind of split into two identities. Purple Guy, as in the murderer in the games, was a mysterious serial killer who was represented by the color purple. We can see in later games that this color was chosen to signify when certain things are related to him. But Purple Guy, as in the toast-obsessed, purple-skinned, Tumblr sexy man, was for some reason named Vincent. And once Vincent had his own name and separate identity, all hell broke loose. A lot of this can be traced back to Rebornica's FNAF fan comics, which were, of course, written on Tumblr. I personally didn't use Tumblr that much at the tender age of 11, but I did use Instagram, where their art was aggressively reposted and replicated. Their art style and the hashtag x 3 canon of their comics quickly gave birth to the Night Guards mini fandom, sort of an alternate universe to the actual FNAF canon. We all kind of recognized that none of it was actually canon, but soon there were some things that were set in canon in this alternate world. Fanon, if you will. Purple Guy's name was Vincent, not anything else. Mike Schmidt and Jeremy Fitzgerald were two separate people. Phone Guy just inexplicably had a red rotary phone for a head, despite this phone not showing up anywhere in the actual game. It was, for all intents and purposes, its own thing. And since all of this was born on Tumblr, of course, all the characters were now gay. And now I'm going to talk about the most embarrassing part of the fandom to me, because it was what I personally was the most invested in, the shipping. As Vincent rose to Tumblr sexy man stardom, it's only natural that people would rush to ship him with other FNAF characters. Thankfully, it was mostly the human characters, and of these Purple Guy ships, one stood out among the rest as the most popular. Purple Phone. Purple Phone is a ship name given to Purple Guy x Phone Guy. Yes, the child murderer x the guy who talks to you on the phone. Except, now they're gay. I can't begin to explain how insane the Purple Phone fanon became. As I mentioned earlier, this version of Purple Guy's name was Vincent. Phone Guy, however, was literally named after the guy who voice acted him and the guy who voice acted him was the creator of Five Nights at Freddy's. This was a ship 
between Vincent and Scott fucking Cawthon. I shit you not, to this day there are hundreds of smutty fanfiction depicting a man with purple skin having gay sex with the creator of Five Nights at Freddy's. Well, kind of, at least. I mean, Phone Guy was his own character with his own personality based around the way Phone Guy talked in the game, his character was actually just a guy with a phone for a head, so he wasn't actually Scott Cawthon, but his name was still Scott Cawthon, and a part of me really hopes that he stumbled across the ship at some point. Anyways. Purple Phone was huge. As far as I can remember, it was the biggest FNAF ship. When I tell people I used to write FNAF fanfiction, I don't mean I wrote about haunted animatronics fucking. I mean I wrote Purple Guy and Phone Guy angst that got 10,000 raids on Wattpad by the time I was 12. I also made fan art of them. Hell, I even went as far as to make a lino cut stamp of Phone Guy in my 6th grade art class. And I'm only talking about myself here because I was far from alone. Literally thousands of young teen girls were invested in this completely made up version of the FNAF villain and his gay love affair with the Phone Guy. You can just tell by looking at the fan art, most of this does not look like it was drawn by an adult. And because of how niche this side of the massive FNAF fandom is, it's faded far into obscurity by now. I haven't heard anyone bring up Purple Phone in years. Sometimes I'll stumble across fan art of Vincent on TikTok with people in the comments saying, please don't remind me of this. But other than that, this entire part of the fandom has been largely forgotten. A bunch of cringy lore written by teenagers about the already convoluted lore of the FNAF universe. I think most of us who contributed don't really want to remember it, which is why Vincent Purple Guy has fallen from grace. With the addition of six or seven new main games to the franchise, we don't have to make up stories anymore. Purple Guy, as we knew him in FNAF 2 and 3, is now synonymous with William Afton. And although Afton doesn't have purple skin, a toast addiction, and a boyfriend with a foam for a head, he's a decent enough character in his own way. Michael's still more interesting though. Purple Guy! Thank you so much for watching this video to the end. Let me know in the comments if you ever encountered this side of the fandom. And it would really help me if you could subscribe to me on YouTube and go follow me on Twitch. I stream almost every single day, and October is going to be filled with horror games, probably a few of which will be Five Nights at Freddy's. That's all I have for now. Peace!